116,000 pounds of farm animal excrement is produced every second in the United States alone. That is enough waste per year to cover every square foot of San Francisco, New York City, Tokyo, Paris, New Delhi, Berlin, Hong Kong, London, Rio de Janeiro, Delaware, Bali, Costa Rica, and Denmark combined. Livestock operations on land has caused more than five, or created more than 500 nitrogen flooded dead zones around the world in our oceans, comprise more than 95,000 square miles of areas completely devoid of life. So any meaningful discussion about the state of our oceans has to always begin by frank discussions about land-based animal agriculture, which is not what our conservation groups, Oceana being the largest one in the world right now, uh, the most influential, as well as others, that's not what is at the apex of their discussions. I went on my favorite ocean protection organization's website, Surfrider Foundation, to see what they were doing about this. Mostly what I've found were campaigns about plastic bags and trash, but nothing about animal agriculture. What is the number one coastal water quality issue polluter? Like, water? yeah, I mean, a lot of it, there's a, it's actually, I call, we call it the, like, the toxic cocktail, because it really is this sort of diffuse source. So it's, um, you know, heavy metal from tires and brakes and cars, heavy metals. Um, it is these herbicides and pesticides. So it's really just, it's kind of picking up the, the everything we leave on the ground and collecting it together and pushing it out into the ocean. So it's hard to actually target like one thing. When we're doing our research on this particular one and runoff uh, and just kind of increasingly as we're like interviewing more and more people, it keeps coming up. Uh, the animal agriculture as being, and we read animal agriculture as being the number one water polluter considerably by more than any other. Yeah, that's interesting. I think, you know, I guess it depends on the regions that you focus on, like the urban areas, which is sort of like where we are here in Southern California. We don't see that because there's not a lot of sort of um, agricultural farms. But if you look in the mid-Atlantic, sort of Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, that region, I know there's a lot of poultry farms and a lot of hog farms, and it's a huge waste issue. I was surprised that not only did they not focus on farm runoff, but they also didn't mention any campaigns about how our oceans are in near collapse. The UN reported that three quarters of the world's fisheries are overexploited, fully exploited, or significantly depleted due to overfishing. The oceans are under siege like never before, and um, marine environments are in trouble. And if we don't wake up and do something about it, um, we're gonna see fishless oceans by the year 2048. That's the prediction from scientists. The fact that when people look at fishing sometimes, they're only looking at the fact of the animals who are actually consumed by humans, and we're not necessarily looking at all the animals who are caught in the drift nets, all the other animals who are killed um, in the industry. And when you look at even the shrimping industry has done a lot to devastate the planet as well in terms of breaking down natural barriers that we have to protect the, the islands. We're at over 28 billion animals were pulled out of the ocean last year. They're not ever given a chance to recover. They can't recover. They don't multiply that quickly. They don't, you know, they don't come back. We're not giving them an opportunity. The oceans are in complete collapse. The, the, the large fish species are nearing extinction. The way fishing is done today to feed the demand for 90 million tons of fish is primarily through massive fish nets. For every single pound of fish caught, there's up to five pounds of untargeted species trapped, such as dolphins, whales, sea turtles, and sharks, known as bikill. If we were to imagine this same sort of practice happening on the African savanna, targeting gazelle, but in the process scooping up every single lion, giraffe, ostrich, and elephant, nobody would stand for it. Yet, this is what is happening in our oceans every single day. Between 40 and 50 million sharks each year are killed in fishing lines and fishing nets as bykill. Then their fins might be cut off or not cut off, but they're caught in initially as bykill. And it's from fishing. It's from fishing in, sustainable, in a sustainable manner, in many cases, for fish that are labeled sustainable by for instance, Oceana and these sustainable certified organizations. So my thought is, is that why would we want to stop at banning shark fin soup if you're concerned about sharks, which all these organizations are and most of the public at large is now. If we really are concerned about sharks, we would ban fishing. 
I went on the world's largest ocean conservation group's website, Oceana, to see what they were doing about this. On their site, along with a TED Talk by CEO Andy Sharpless, I was astounded to read they actually recommend that one of the best ways to help fish is to eat fish. With a world's fish population in near collapse, this seems like saying the best way to help endangered pandas is to eat pandas. I couldn't understand how Oceana could say we could remove close to 100 million tons of fish per year and that could somehow be sustainable and good for our oceans. Many of the species that are nearing extinction have done so, are uh, being ravaged and becoming nearly extinct in a declining fashion and haven't recovered on the watch of Oceana and on the watch of uh, Marine Stewardship Council and very much on the watch of Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch, which you know, I mentioned in one of my lectures, that's you know, their aptly named because that's, that's what they're doing. They're sort of watching this happen instead of you know, aggressively halting it. I mean, according to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, you know, roughly three quarters of all the fisheries out there are either fully exploited or overexploited. So there's really not a whole lot of, of, of fish stocks out there that uh, you might consider uh, at healthy levels for the, for the ecosystem. Watching Andy's TED Talk um, gave a, about feeding the world. In 1988, fish catch, as you mentioned, peaked at 85 million tons. How is it possible that we can sustainably catch 100 million tons by 2050, regardless, if it's, regardless if, it, if it's in a farm or if it's in the ocean? If for every pound of fish you're taking out, you're essentially taking out five pounds of wild fish, no matter whether it's a pond or it's, or, or it's in, in the ocean. How can that be sustainable? The ultimate, the ultimate question, right, is, is that there is a tremendous amount of natural production that, that is, you know, basically coming out of the oceans all the time. So we have major, a massive amount of upwelling from our ocean conveyor belt that's bringing up, you know, ancient thousand year old nutrients and, and our ecosystems are turning that into fish. Yes, they're eating each other and you're losing you know, some of that production every step up in the food chain, but you get more every year. You can fish and take some out, and next year there will be more. And if we do that right without ultimately hitting the fundamental driver, it's sort of like living off the, the interest, right? As long as you don't as long as you don't bring your principle down, right, if you're investing in something, as long as you're not hitting into that principle and your principle remains high, you could potentially live off the interest forever. But and that's the basic idea with fish. With our population right now, what we're doing is 70, if it's 75% depleted, the fishery's now depleted. And, you're, you know, it's a good analogy with money. We're not living off our interest. We're in extreme debt. And if we're, our population who's trying to live as a family on the same amount of money, and it's increasing 35% to 9 billion people, right. isn't it just, hey, we got to stop spending money? Yeah. We need to stop eating fish. Well, if, if you could bring the principle back. Fishing of any type is, is depleting not only the species, but you get into this serial depletion where one fish species will be minimized and they'll, the fishing industry uh, for that fishery will move on to the next species. And it's, it's called serial depletion, it's aptly named. And in the process, so the fish are being lost, not only, not only the species is being lost, but the next in line is being lost, and then the mechanism is still extremely destructive. So they're losing the fish species, but it needs to be kept in mind they're also destroying habitat. I think they came up with this term, sustainable fishing, to make ourselves feel good about eating fish and continuing to take fish out of the oceans, when in fact, really, it's Sea Shepherd's position that there is no such thing as sustainable fishing. Seafood is not a protein source for, uh, a sustainable protein source for the, for the uh, feeding of the planet, of the people on the planet, it's just not. People don't want to hear it because that makes them feel like they have to take action. They have to stop doing something. And a lot of people don't want to. And people don't want to, they, they don't want to put it out there because it's uncomfortable. They don't want to propose to tell people what to do. But we're at a point where we all have to be cognizant and we have to realize and we have to take an action. Our founder, Captain Watson, likes to say, if the oceans die, we die. That's not a tagline. That's the truth.